Good morning, excuse the dryer sounds in the background. I just finished getting ready-ish. I did like part one of blow drying my hair. I tend to do it in like two different stages because my hair is super thick. Ooh, I got some flyaways. It's super thick and so it takes forever to actually dry. But today's pretty exciting because Brian and I are headed to a registry event at Crate and Barrel and I had never heard of registry events. When I went online to actually create our registry on Crate and Barrel because we knew that we wanted like our everyday plates and silverware and stuff like that from there, I noticed that they had events in certain locations and Dallas has like Whoa. Dallas has like two or three crate and barrel locations. We have one that's closer to us. So we're going to that one. But anyway, you have like a raffle. They give you a free gift for going, which I think is like two wine glasses. And you get to actually like take your phone around and register in the store while it's shut down. It's usually from 9 to 11 a.m. And they have a bunch of staff standing around kind of helping you. I do have some technical difficulties though because I set up our registry online that Brian and I have both been adding to. And then it required me to set up a registry through the app and that kind of like created a duplicate registry that has nothing on it. So we may be talking to the IT department and Crate and Barrel to try to get that fixed. But in the meantime, I'm actually making a smoothie before we hit the road. So I can just show you what's in that. I use this magic bullet all the time. This is a hand-me-down from a friend at work when she actually went and worked abroad for two years. But it comes with these handy dandy little cups and all these attachments that blend so you can make a one-person smoothie. And I like these little smoothie packs from Costco. Let's see, this froze kind of funky. But this is from the brand Clovis Farms and it's the organic super smoothie. And it comes with little spinach chunks, bananas, strawberries, uh, blueberries. I think that's everything. But these are super easy. All you do is cut the top off. I put it in here and pro tip, these little spinach things are really, really hard. And this blade isn't the strongest. This isn't like a ninja or anything. So it doesn't do a good job of grinding these up if you don't kind of heat them a little first. So I typically heat these for one minute in the microwave so that then I have room to actually add Greek yogurt, a tablespoon of these chia seeds that I got at Costco. Oat milk is just what I have right now. This stuff is really tasty. I hate milk, but this has a good flavor. And then I really like this protein powder. It's the Garden of Life. It's a um, plant-based protein. For my smoothies, I typically put a half of a scoop. So let's blend this sucker up. Amended ingredients. I noticed that there's also raspberries in here, which happen to be my favorite fruit. So maybe that's why I like this so much. But as you can see, when you just dump the package out into the little cup here, it's way overflowing. Obviously there's no room. So once I microwave this, things will actually melt and I'll be able to fit a lot more in. And here's the finished product. It's a little bit more purple than it usually is, but I think that just must be because it had more blueberries. Or something. Okay, finally ready taking my smoothie to go because I'm actually running a little bit behind, but we're gonna pick up Brian and then head that way. Side note, Brian hates vlogging. So we're gonna see if he actually lets me do this. If not, I'm just gonna show you shots of things that we're getting in the store. And then maybe we'll turn this into a how to build a registry video or something. Stay tuned. Filming or watching a video? This was really cool too. They had little snacks and food and coffee and orange juice to enjoy while we kind of went around the store. And you just use your phone to scan everything, which is kind of cool. So you can come back whenever and you can just type in the SKU or you can take a picture of it or whatever you want. And it adds it straight to your registry. Brian's looking at furniture. What are you doing? Is there any way we can see it with the top down? Uh, yeah, I'd have to see the poles out there. Like, this is gonna be the same thing. Oh. That's just a toy trunk. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it would... Just imagine that first. You just pull that part of the table up. And demonstrate. I currently have a coffee table like this and we really like it. So you're kind of thinking, but Brian's couch really needs an ottoman. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. But it is kind of weird though, because then when you're watching TV, not that that's super high, but that kind of sits up while you're using your table. Is that weird? Like this is how it would be if we were eating our dinner. That would be flipped up. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, the TV's up there. So as long as you're cool with your peripherals, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. 
It's a thought. It's a it's a cool functional invention. This much storage. And it's a fair amount. Like you could put all your blankets on it for sure. You can see how it has this additional space down here where we could keep our blankets, which is how I currently have my coffee table blanket couch situation set up which would be really nice. These are the plates that we registered for. These are what we're gonna use every day. We're not registering for China. These are in the Mercer style and we just really loved kind of the organic look of it. We registered for it in white, but they also offer this one in gray and blue. And we just loved the pasta bowls, the mini bowls, and we loved that the plates had a tiny little lip. So they're gonna fit really nicely in the dishwasher. Okay, so I have left Brian downstairs to figure out the coffee table situation and I'm coming to find our towels because we realized that we actually scanned the wrong color and model number. So I just decided to give you a tour in the meantime. We really liked this towel display right here. So currently I have these registered for the guest room with these little fancy hand towels. But I'm gonna have to see how I think it looks with all of my bedding because all of my bedroom suite is going in the guest room and we're using all of Brian's stuff for our master. But we registered for these gray towels for our everyday and this is the Turkish Organic Gray Bath Towel. It is so plush, oh my gosh. So we're actually doing a set of six. Let me know if that's too many or too few. We thought that would be good. I use tons of washcloths so I'm actually getting 10. Hmm. Okay, over here, Brian got all of his furniture from Crate and Barrel not too long ago, so he has this bed in the king size, and it's actually this Dawson, but it's the king size, and he actually has these little, like, plush panels here, and then he just bought this six dresser, like the six drawer dresser, which is right over here, and he has these nightstands on either side, so this is going to be our bedroom furniture, and this is the coolest because it has that soft close. So we're pumped about that because we didn't know he just bought it online because everything was 15% off. Oh look, this kind of shows you, this is actually what his headboard looks like. It's tufted, so it has the dark wood and then this cream tufted area. So that gives you an idea we're going with like darker colors, but then we're gonna have like pops of color and neutrals kind of all over. So it's not gonna be this kind of like light pink girly looking. Here's an example of some neutral bedding that we do really like. Okay, I have to say, I don't love a ton of Crate and Barrel's pillows, but we really liked this one. It just has so much texture, and Brian has just like a very plain gray couch. So we did two of these pillows, and then he has these other ones that are really cute already that are little baby lumbar pillows that have like leather in the corners, and we think it'll all look really good together. So we are back from the Crate and Barrel registry event, and I wanted to take some time to sit down and give you an overview of what we just did. I know that I didn't get shots of everything that I wanted to show you, but I wanted to just tell you about the event in case you have a Crate and Barrel in your area. This was really cool, and a lot of other companies don't offer specific registry events like this. So how this worked is we showed up at 9 a.m. It was scheduled to be two hours from 9 to 11. You walked in, they asked you if you had already downloaded the Crate and Barrel app. And if you had, you could go upstairs, and if you hadn't, they kind of showed you how to do that. So something that's a little different with Crate and Barrel that you won't find at bigger box stores like Bed Bath & Beyond or something is that they don't actually give you that fun like laser gun. You register for everything on your phone. It has a barcode scanner. It all works the exact same way. So you have to have that app in order to actually be participating at the registry event. So first things first, download that app. Then they sent you upstairs and they had all of these little breakfast pastry type things like brownies, which I thought was kind of strange. And then they had coffee and orange juice and water. And then they kind of had an orientation with everybody. So this one person passed out these little flyers. This is one big checklist of absolutely everything they could think of that you may need in your home. So because Brian and I are kind of type A and we wanted to do things the most efficient way possible, we went through and as you can see, I started taking a Sharpie and just marking through things that I knew that we did didn't need. Like these guides are just that. They're just guides. So don't feel like you need to go register for every serving piece under the sun. If you don't like to entertain, then don't register for that. So this just gives you a good jumping off point and you can see we crossed out a lot. And then I was adding dots next to everything that I was like, okay, I think we need to hit these things, whatever. And we had done some work ahead of time. We got on and we created our registry on crateandbarrel.com because they told us that you need to come with some idea of what you want. That way they could answer questions for you. You aren't stressed 
stressed out trying to register for absolutely everything. Another thing that Brian and I are doing is we're registering at a bunch of different places. I think we have four-ish places picked out right now and Crate and Barrel just happens to be one of them because it's so reasonably priced and has really high quality items. And I got some really good advice on registering for plates and flatware. That is to go for things that are quote unquote open stock. And what that means is that if all of a sudden one day I have Butterfingers and I break a plate, I don't have to go and buy an entire set. I can actually go and just buy one singular plate and replace that one. This also kind of allows for some variety on our registry so that people who can afford different price points can afford to get you something. So for instance, we know we want 12 place settings. So we registered for a set of eight plates, which is costing like, I don't know, $50. But then we also registered for four additional single plates so that if somebody just wants to buy one plate, for $5.95, they can do that too. So it's just creating a variety of price points that makes your registry a bit more versatile for all of your guests. And it's still allowing us to get the right quantity. And again, it's also like future proof. So that was kind of why we went with that method. Another thing that we did is we're not registering for any of the mugs that went with those place settings because we like to go on trips and get unique mugs from the different places that we go. So we know that we would much prefer to have like all of our little mismatched mugs rather than plain white mugs that maybe go with the entire place setting. Another thing we registered for was everyday glasses and we actually ended up picking some that I think are marketed more as barware. So we chose highball glasses and lowball glasses or old-fashioned glasses, but that is what we're gonna use for our everyday glasses. It's just a really pretty simple, very lightly green kind of recycled glass look. Another thing that we waited and we did not add anything to the registry for online was our silverware because we really wanted to go and feel it and feel the weightiness of it and make sure that it looked the way that we wanted. And so we ended up finding a great set. The style is called Facet and it's very simple, but it has these skinnier type handles on all the forks, the spoons. It's also kind of like geometric and I'll put a picture up and hopefully you can see this is one thing that I don't think I got video of it's also open stock so again if we lose one spoon to the garbage disposal in the sink or something we can go buy one more spoon to replace the one that we lost or if one day kids like throw away silverware again you can go and replace that so trying to think practically I already have a set of knives from this uh, Wolstoff I think is how you pronounce it, brand. And so we went and talked to the knife rep who was available for this registry event and said, okay, I already have this block. It has these three specific knives and some shears. What else do you think we'll need? So she helped us curate the different knives that we might wanna register for. And instead of us registering for an entire very expensive block of like 16 knives, we registered for a block and then we just registered for three additional knives so that over time we can kind of build our knife collection. We didn't want too many. We're trying not to be wasteful. We're just thinking about exactly what we need. And then over time we can kind of fill up that block. And we had registered for some other like wooden accents like a big serving bowl and a cheese board and stuff in this acacia, I think is how you pronounce it, wood. And so we got our knife block to match that wood just to try to make things a little bit more cohesive. And then because we talked to the knife rep she gave us this bag and then it also had all this cool stuff so it has this little super absorbent feeling rag a little koozie two pins two of these grippy things and if you don't own any of these I highly recommend getting one these are so nice and I've been without one for so long but my family always had these growing up and they make opening jars really really easy this is you can grip hand tools with it place it between skillets when you're stacking them you can protect tabletops so you could use it kind of like a trivet if your plate is really hot it removes lint it can help triple your strength I guess to open jars peel garlic I mean these things do everything so we got two of those and then this is a knife guide and that was just for talking to her which was really nice so that was kind of a cool perk. We also registered for a lot of our barware. Brian and I are really into good cocktails. So what we did is just basically completed the set that Brian already had from Crate and Barrel. So he has these beautiful little hatch glasses is what they're called. It's just old fashioned glasses with this little like hatchwork pattern. So we registered for an additional four to complete a set of eight. And we did the same thing for the highball glasses. We also got a decanter and then two little bar tools. We didn't want too much. We already have some things for a bar cart, but we were just basically filling out the collection. And those are so 
affordable. It's like $4.95 a glass and it's really good quality and again if you break one you can go and just buy one and replace it which is so nice. And just for showing up in RCPing you also get this canvas bag that came with a little prize that I actually haven't opened yet. So let's take a look inside of this. Whew. It came with a lot of little like magazines and advertisements. This is from the Black Tux and I think that this gives Brian some sort of discount so that's cool. This is from Cuisine Art so this is another like registry inspiration catalog. This one's from Core Event. Oh my gosh these things are so cool but insanely expensive. It's a tool that injects some sort of needle or something into a wine cork and you can actually pour glasses of wine without ever opening your wine bottle so you can basically drink wine from a closed bottle so it stays good for a really long time. This might be something that we register for and just cross our fingers. But another cool thing about registering at Crate and Barrel is that up to three months following your wedding, you actually get anything that's left on your registry 15% off, including furniture. And then, oh, this is also deals on like different honeymoon destinations that they told us about at orientation. But then the gift itself... It comes in this cute little bag that says congrats and I believe this is a set of two like very basic wine glasses. Yeah, so these are just really basic little stemless wine glasses, but that was very nice. These two nice little wine glasses, especially if you don't have a lot. So I hope that these registry tips were helpful. This of course is not everything that we registered for, but hopefully I gave you little nuggets of information that can kind of be translated across your registry. But if you end up getting things that maybe you realize, oh, I registered for this, but I really don't need it. You can always return that for store credit and get things that you actually need as well. Their tip to us was register for more than you think. Another cool feature on the knot or something is that if maybe you already have all the glasses and plates and everything that you need, you can just register for cash funds for different things. So if family members still wanted to get you a gift and you really don't need anything tangible, you could create a cash fund for a certain excursion on your honeymoon or something. If you have any other tips or tricks, please leave them in the comments below. We'd love to hear. And if y'all want a more exciting extensive video on the research or any more vlog style wedding videos let me know this was kind of a fun little different thing hopefully you got to see a little bit of brian even though he really hates the vlog style videos but if you like this video then like it stick around subscribe and i'll see you in my next one bye